Hey, this is Terra Toots with part two of creating a basic lake in Terrigen 4. In the last video, we covered placing the lake and adding shaders for dirt, grass, and mud. In this video, we'll finish out the shaders and add some grass and trees to round out the scene. The first thing we'll do is use a fake stones layer to add a few rocks to the edge of the water. We'll add the layer, and let's set the stone scale to 0.65 and the density to 0.25. We'll also increase the density variation to 2 to give some variation in the number of stones as we look along the lakeside. I want somewhat flat stones, so let's bring the tallness down to 0.3. We'll set the color to a dark gray. To give some variation to the color, we'll add a power fractal as a surface shader, and set the high color to 0 0.1. This should give us a variety of darker gray stones. Make sure to turn off displacement on the surface shader. Finally, we want the stones to appear only along the shore of the lake. So we'll add a distribution shader and use it to mask the fake stones. We'll limit the maximum altitude to 5.6 with a two meter fuzzy zone and the minimum altitude to negative 8 with a 5 meter fuzzy zone. Make sure to set the altitude key to use Y to make it a little easier to position the rock layer. We'll finish off the shaders with a reflective shader to add a little bit of glisten to the very edge of the waterline. This will add some render time, but can be a nice effect. We'll first add a surface layer and turn off Apply Color. This will act as the container for our reflective shader. We'll set the maximum altitude to 1.5 with a half meter fuzzy zone and the minimum altitude to negative 5 with a half meter fuzzy zone. Set Altitude Key to Final Position Use Y for a nice even line at the water's edge. Now. We'll add the reflective shader itself as a child layer to this surface layer. This will make it inherit the altitude constraints we just set. Next, we'll move on to adding a grass population to supplement our grass shader. I'm going to be using a grass model from the Silva 3D free sampler pack on the Terrigen website. We'll come to the Object tab, Add Object, Population, TGL Reader. We'll select the grass object and move the center of the population a little closer to the camera. What we're going to try to do is to cover this near shore with the more detailed grass. You can, of course, cover the entire scene if you desire, but restricting the grass to the foreground can save on rendering time and memory. We'll change the area of the population to make it into a long rectangle shape to cover the shore area, just in front of the camera. Next, we'll change the spacing to make the grass patches closer together. In the Rotation tab, I'll check Lean to Terrain so that the grass is angled with the terrain and increase the effect. If we populate now, we're going to see a lot of grass. For this scene, I don't want the grass covering the terrain evenly, so we'll add a distribution shader as a density shader for the grass. and set the coverage to 0.75. We'll add a minimum altitude constraint close to the waterline with a bit of fade, and a maximum altitude constraint higher up with a larger fade. For a straighter line by the water's edge, we'll check Use Y as the altitude key. This will give us a pretty good distribution of grass, but let's give it some more variation and add some clumping to the population. We'll turn on Fractal Breakup, turn it up to 1, and in the Fractal Breakup, we're going to set the Feature Scale to 10. In the Tweak Noise tab, 
will increase the buoyancy from variation and clumping of variation parameters. This will give us some more clumping in the grass. We'll also add a one octave Perlin warp for additional variation. Next, let's add some color variation to our grass population. In the color tab, add a power fractal shader to the tint fuse color field. Let's come into the power fractal. We'll increase the scale to five and change the high color to a light yellow. And we'll actually increase this to 1.1. We'll set the low color to 0.5. In addition, we're going to up the contrast a bit and increase the roughness. This should give us some more color variation in the grass. With the grass complete, we'll move on to some trees. In this case, we'll use the sweet birch from XROG's free sample pack. I'm going to take a similar approach here as we used with the grass, increasing the area and spacing this time, and using the fractal breakup to vary the distribution of the trees. We'll also use a power fractal to give some color variation to the tree population. From here, we'll finish things off with a layer of cumulus clouds. And our basic lake is complete. From here, you can continue to add additional detail as desired. Hopefully this gets you started in creating your own basic lake.